Hey there everybody, it's Nathan Cool with NathanCoolPhoto.com and in this tutorial I want to show you a few different ways that you can either repair or patch the Nader and Zenith in your 360 panoramas. Now if you've ever shot a virtual tour and you're looking down on the 360 panel, you might see your little stand, you might see uh, your tripod. If you're using the technique that I showed the last time around in the last video where we're using just a very big wide angle lens on a DSLR, we just did four shots around, you going to have a little bit of zenith up at the top that you might want to take care of. So I'm going to show how to repair that as well. If you've ever tried to do this with a 360 panorama, you know how difficult it is because it's already made spherical. So it's already got the curves and waves in it, kind of like what's on the screen right now. But there's some simple ways to do this using Photoshop and also some stuff in PT GUI. And I'm going to show you then a few different techniques to use a combination of or one or the other to make this happen so it's pretty quick and easy. Anyways, you want to dive into this and see how this is all done? Let's get started. So this is the example that I'm going to use. I'm going to show a couple different ways to take care of this. I'm just showing this in Adobe Bridge. Um, if we zoom in, we can see that there's the tripod underneath that uh, was holding the Theta Z1 just uh, with this. So the Theta Z1 did a good job. It catches the Zenith, no problem, but we still have something underneath. So this is a real common no matter what you're going to be up against. And if you were to put that into a, uh, a pano, what you would see is this. You would see the tripod at the bottom. By the way, this is Marzipano, uh, marzipano.net slash tool. And as I show in other videos, you can use this to generate your panos for free and also just to see what they would look like. So everything in the bathroom here looks fine. We can look up at the top, that's fine. There's just a Rico Theta Z1 catches that, but that little guy is down there at the bottom. So a lot of times I just leave that if it's a very simple MLS shoot, somebody wants to bother looking down, well, say hello to my tripod. But if you do want to patch that out, and in some cases you will, the higher end you, you go with gig the more editing you will have to do. So we're going to show how you could do this and you add this little patch in there. Very simple, but this is also something that's it's super easy and it's something that uh, is very common for commercial gigs, for businesses. Also, if we want to take it a step further, we can completely remove the tripod. And once again, if we were to try to do this with it in its state like this, that would be very, very difficult to do to try to figure it out. So there's a very simple way though to get it to uh, this point. I'm gonna show that example. And then also from yesterday where I did this in my house where we needed to do the Zenith and Nadir also. So anyways, let's get started on this to see how this is done. So what I had done is I opened this one up already in Photoshop from Bridge. So here we go. And then what you do is to, the easiest way to patch this is you can create a new document, which I've done here, and it's usually good to do it about 4,000 pixels wide for, and make it a square if you can. And then the next thing that you would do is you would type in something. So I just used some text. I'd use the text tool. And I just said hello up there. Now you could at this point have dropped in a logo. In fact, you might not even need to do anything. So it's, a lot of times I'll just leave it completely black and it's just a black hole underneath of it. Either way, what you want to do is once you have, whether it's a logo or whatnot that's there, then you want to go to layer and then you want to flatten the image. So you want it completely flattened at this point because what we're going to do now is we're going to distort the whole thing. So what we want to do is go to filter and then we want to go to distort polar coordinates. In there you want to make sure that polar to rectangular is selected. Not rectangular to polar, you want polar to rectangular. Now that may seem a little odd um, because you would think well we're putting this into some type of circular uh, panorama but anyways trust me it is polar to rectangular. By the way these steps are in the uh, virtual tour ebook also on, on doing this. So you would just click OK and then you're going to see this weird looking thing. The next thing I like to do is flip it horizontally and vertically so you can do that with an edit and you can go to excuse me you go to image and then you would do image rotation and flip canvas vertically and then the same thing with image and then to uh, image rotation and flip canvas horizontally okay now that you've got that copy it all just do a control a or a command a on a mac Control C, you've got that copied. Go back over to your panel, we'll zoom out a little bit, and paste it, Control V. 
Now what you want to do is you just want to scale this so that it covers that bottom area. So we're going to go to edit adjustments, uh, transform I should say, and we're going to go to scale. So I'm going to scale this around to where it just is down at the bottom. It starts covering up this patch area that we want to use down here. And then we can stretch this over to the sides. I'm going to zoom in a little bit, make sure that I did snap in here. So I'm just going to go in real close here with the zoom tool, make sure does that look okay over there? Does that look okay over here? Yep, that looks good. Okay, so then we just, we can zoom out on this if we want to, but then we just layer flatten image and that's all fine. So when we had saved that, then it would look like this when uh, it's all saved out. And uh, that would be something then we would put into Marzipano. And when we put that into Marzipano, then it would come out looking like this. It gets back to being circular. Remember what's happening here is when we look at it, it's completely flattened. The circle has been flattened. But once you have it in a uh, 360 viewer, it brings everything back into a circle. So you can see that's very simple. In fact, we could have stipped, skipped the steps of adding the text or, in, or logo if we wanted to and just put a black layer over top of where we wanted here and that would have covered that up as well. So once again, I usually don't do this for standard MLS shoots that are using our lowest cost virtual tour using the Ricoh Theta Z1. Once we get into more advanced stuff, that's a little bit different. Anyways, there's another way to do this as well. Let's go back here to Bridge and let me show you. We're going to use PT GUI for this next one. So let's take our pano again, and we've got this uh, bathroom.tiff. What I can do is I can load this into PT GUI and get out of it what's known as cube faces. Let me show you what I mean. It's a very simple process. I'm going to go to PT GUI, I'm going to go to Tools, and then I'm going to use Convert to cube faces. And you get this little tool. Now you can either hit the little plus button to add a file, or you can also drag it over. So I'll just go over here and using bridge, I'll drag that TIFF over into that tool. Boom, so it's loaded as a file right there. So let's just go ahead and take a bridge and minimize him and we'll see what's going on here. Very simple stuff, use the defaults, automatic equi rectangular 360, and then we're gonna make six cube faces. now. I want to save these to a specific directory, so I'm going to browse, and I'm going to browse to where our tutorials are, and in this example that I've got here, I'll make a new folder, and I'll call it cubes. That way we can keep track of where all this is, okay? And then all you have to do is say convert. It's a very quick process. Close that, you're done. Now let's go back here to Bridge and take a look. We have a directory called cubes. If we go in there, we're going to see six files. We've got what it considers the back. Now look here, these are straight up and down. These are the uh, corrected ones as though what something we'd be used to editing in Photoshop. So you can see here having this one, now we could take this and edit it. And then we'll be able to put this back together as a panel. So let's open this in Photoshop. You can do that just by double clicking on it and bridge. Now comes the tricky part. How do we clone this out? There's a lot of ways. One way to do this might be to use the patch tool. So for instance, uh, I could use the patch tool. I just hit J to do that. It's up here and using that particular patch tool, then I can just draw a patch around this. See if that will then if I can line this up on some other tiles. Does usually a pretty good job. You can see how I'm kind of trying to line that up. It's not going to scale 100% correct no matter what I do. Maybe try a different area here. Try to get something that looks fairly decent. Let's just try that. Okay. I'll unselect that. Now, I've got some rough areas here, and this is then where if I wanted to, I'd go through the bother of starting to clone, uh, and you can see why I don't usually do this, um, but then you could start cloning certain things. So I could maybe clone some of this out. I could draw around different tiles. Um, try to get some of these lines lined up properly, and it does take some doing. So if you're gonna be doing this process, you wanna to try to find an area 
that you would put your tripod on that uh, for taking the pano that would have as plain a floor as possible. If this also had a rug and under things, other things below it, that would just be awful. So anyway, I'm just gonna do this real quick. Not gonna spend a lot of time so you can actually get into some of the steps that would be involved with this. Let's zoom back out. Let's just say that that's good enough. Yes, I know it needs some more touch-ups on there, but we'll just save it. Let's do Control S and save it. Now when we go back to Bridge, we can see that that's been saved. Now all we have to do is reassemble this in PT GUI. So we go to PT GUI and then we take and select all these files and just drag them over into the first step of the PT GUI process, which is load images. So we'll just load those into there. Okay, now if you're used to using PT GUI and you've seen this from my other uh, tutorials on doing 360 panoramas with the DSLR or with just using PT GUI, you can see that there would normally be step two for aligning um, the, uh, the images, but it doesn't have to do it in this case because it knows what those cube faces are, so you merely just create panorama. We'll save it to the same directory and it is going to go out as a TIFF just like I show in other tutorials, so we'll just say create panorama and now we're done. It's that quick. We'll go back over here and there was our cube faces that we had. Remember that's the one we repaired. It will now, excuse me, that was the one that we repaired. Now we have this one generated and you can see there's a little bit of stuff that's kind of missing there when I did this edit. When I did the full one though, when it was all said and done, then it looked like this. So yeah, I didn't do the best job here. Still so look at all the lines. You can see it's a very difficult process compared to just putting a patch over it. So anyways, using cube faces, you can do quite a bit and it's not just for the nadir. Let's now take a look at the other example. And that is when we used this guy here. So this one was taken, if you recall from the last video, there was four images taken using a, a full frame fisheye. So it was an eight millimeter uh, Sam Yang on a full frame camera. That's why we've got all this extra stuff up here. But you've got such a big field of view that you really hardly have any zenith that shows up. When we generated the pano out of this after aligning it in PT GUI, it looked like this. And you can see that we've got quite a bit of zenith error up here. So if we were to bring that into Marzipano, we would see a little square on that. See what I mean? Let's turn this into cube faces and do the exact same type of repair on the Zenith and the Nadir. So we'll go back over here to PT GUI and just start a new project. We won't have to save that. Let's load that image into our convert to cube faces. So we'll take that particular image and load it up there. Okay, and then all we have to do is convert and it'll generate our cube faces. Now it's gonna do it in the same directory because I didn't say a different directory for cubes, which is fine. So now we've got here, you can see there's our bottom, there's, and then here is our top, there's our zenith. Wasn't much to repair, but it's still enough to where, yeah, we should do something about that. So let's take these cube faces and fix them. So once again, I can just double click on here, and this is an easy one to fix. Since it's just a plain ceiling, I'll draw a polygon around this whole area, and then just go to Edit, Fill, Content Aware, and that should just fix that, no problem, boom. Okay, and I can just save that and go back and that's all fixed. So boom, I got my Zenith all repaired. I could do the same thing then just like I did before to try to hide the tripod on here. Bunch of different cloning stuff uh, possibly and that's what I did uh, on the last video too where I'll just take this and I'll try to maybe patch some of this in here. Uh, get some of that to go away. You can see that it takes some doing to really try to match it up. If you take your own uh, nadir, your nadir shot um, yourself, then of course you can avoid doing this, but it is extra work um, and you have to have special gear to do it. So depending on where you are on site and what gear you have, like in yesterday's, uh, excuse me, my last example that I did, that was gonna to be tough because of that type of pano head that I was using. So anyways, that's not too bad. If somebody really wants to look down and see it, boom. So anyways, we go back, we see that, that's not looking too bad. So now we can go back to PT GUI, get rid of our cube faces little dialogue. So now I'll just grab those cube faces, one, two, three, four, 
five, six cube faces to put this back together. And we will drag those over into PT GUI and create a panorama. And then we can do, we'll re just rename this to dash done, or we'll put done in front of it. So we'll just put done. So we know that's done. And we'll just create the panorama. Now we go back here and we can see then where done is and done is done and done. So now we've got that repaired. So what we started with, um, with a big problem with the Zenith, and of course a lot of stuff shown in the Nader was this, and then once we did this cube faces fixed for both the top and bottom, this is what we ended up with. And when we take a look at over here in Marzipano, this is what it looked like. Yeah, a little bit of splotchiness down there on the bottom. I could have gotten real super fancy and fixed that so you'd never notice it, but if somebody really wants to look down, well, that's what you get. And then up here, that was super easy. So once again, though, you have to plan your shot at best if you're going to be doing these Zenith uh, repairs and also if you're going to be doing uh, your Nadir uh, repairs. If you're doing a patch, you can put it any place because you just put one of these on there. And like I said, most of the time, if it's a very low cost uh, virtual tour, somebody really wants to look down down well, that's what they're going to see. So these options are up to you. Once again, link to this finished, uh, all these finished panos is in the description for this video, as well as other pertinent links regarding this stuff I just talked about. Well, I hope this video was useful for you and that you can use some of this in your photography as well. If you did like this tutorial, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. It won't cost anything. And as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, take care, be safe, and get out there and shoot something.